Selenophilia, loving the moon and finding it soothingly captivating. Tsukishi McKay was deeply and utterly enthralled with the sight of the moon. Just catching a glimpse of the frosty, otherworldly object provided him with a spark of jubilation. He would often go out of his way just to grasp even the slightest sight of the moon. Waking up at 5 a.m. was an everyday activity for Kay. Whether it take place during the humid summers or the blustery winters, he didn't care for any aspect of the weather. All he cared for was sighting a small sliver of the moon peeking out from behind the vagrant white collection of water crystals. During the months of summer, Kay would awaken himself and dress himself nicely. He would grab his small, thin blanket, as well as his mint green Polaroid camera. He would quietly vacate his home and make it onto the pale sidewalk. He would drape his unattenuated blanket across his shoulders as his Polaroid camera hung from around his neck. The morning summer breeze would weave through his body and flow about with his blanket. It was almost as if the wind and the blanket were friends, and they were simply dancing around with one another. Kay adored the breeze, though. He loved the feeling of the small wisps of air flowing throughout his already messy blonde hair. Kay would invariably walk to the park and sit underneath his favorite cherry blossom tree. He would rest his blanket in the exact same locality, right beside the tree's wooden trunk. His back would lay upon the tree trunk, as his eyes would gaze up into the all-too-familiar abyss. His eyes would scan each and every star ever so carefully. Before his golden orbs would reach the luminous moon, his eyes would twinkle and shine as the moon's light would radiate off his compassionate eyes. He would slowly lift his Polaroid, his eyes never withdrawing from the moon. He would delicately place his camera exactly in front of his left eye. He would clench his right eye shut while his left eye stayed open and alert. He would angle and tilt his camera, making sure he captured the most perfect perspective of the scene lying out in front of him. Once he found the exact focus he wanted to keep with him forever, he would snap the picture. He would then lower his camera and open his right eye once again. He would patiently wait for the picture to print out from his camera. When the camera would finish printing out the picture, he would carefully pull it out and take a peek at it. He would either fall in love with the picture and add it to his collection, or he'd shake his head at the flawed picture and repeat the previous process all over again. Soon enough, the summer weather would change and the crisp winter's air would shift throughout the environment. The cherry blossom situated from above his head would begin to fall and land in his messy blonde hair. The cherry blossoms would quickly disperse as snow would take over the tree's branches. Clouds would take over the inky sky, concealing the moon behind them. Kay gave it no mind. He would continue his actions and sit in the cold all morning. He would accept the snow that twirled down from the sky and danced throughout his figure. He wouldn't mind the coldness biting at his ears and cheeks, for he very much was keen on the clouds hiding the moon. Although he couldn't ever get a clear image of the moon without it being hidden, the moon's bright rays never failed to light up the clouds. It was a beautiful sight, Kay would admit, the way he could see the ridges and edges of the clouds and how the clouds faded from a light misty color to a dark and mysterious pigment. His camera captured each and every moment perfectly. He was ever so thankful for that. He thought capturing every enjoyable moment in his life was definitely what he wanted to carry throughout his growth as a person. He would place all of his quintessential photographs in a photo book making sure no scratches or blemishes made its way onto his captured scenes. The way Kay saw everything, it was like every day, was a new awaiting moment to capture the most important infatuation of his. He never devised to spend his life any other way. He never planned on going to college. He never planned on falling in love. 
He never planned on starting a family. That's just the way Kay thrived to spend his time on Earth. But all of Kay's notions were washed away one very expressive and life-changing summer morning. Halophilia, desire to stay in the sun, love of sunlight. You had a gargantium dream, a dream so mighty that it was merely impossible. What was this dream, you may ask? Well, you aspire to visit the sun yourself someday. Yes, the sun. Of course, you knew that never in your wildest dreams would you be able to visit the sun, let alone touch it. Although your dream is the most impossible ambition, you don't let that carry you down. You think if you can't ever touch your passion, why not capture it? So that's exactly what you did. You simply went out one day and bought yourself a professional digital camera. You made it your mission to take the most heartwarming and meaningful photographs you could. Lucky for you, you found a small park near your apartment. You unquestionably knew that it was the perfect spot for you. So after days of planning, you woke up early one summer morning. You collected your backpack and filled it to the brim with supplies. You stuffed a small, fluffy blanket, some snacks, a scrapbook, and of course, your never-used-before camera. You ventured out into the morning brisk air and walked up and down the pasty sidewalks, your face bright with excitement and your eyes scanning your dim surroundings in curiosity. You pondered what this blessed day would bring upon you. When you made it to the park, you took a brief pause to scrutinize the new environment. You found a tall, cherry blossom tree standing tall and proud in the middle of the minuscule park. Without one doubt crawling through your mind, you knew that would be the spot you would visit every morning at exactly 6 a.m. sharp. Your feet carried your body over toward the colossal tree before coming upon it. As you were about to place your backpack down onto the ripe grass, you heard a loud click, noticing right away that it was the sound of a camera. Your head whipped around in curiosity. You peeked your little head around the tree's large trunk, your hands carefully clutching onto the bark. Your eyes trailed down to the ground before you instantly spotted a blonde boy sitting crisscross on the ground. You raked his appearance, noting that he appeared rather tall and thin, his hair slightly sprawled out in different directions, a nice blonde color to it. You also didn't fail to notice the Polaroid in his hands, as well as a few very well thought out photographs nestled into the blanket beneath him. Thinking he was one of the most beautiful people you had ever seen, you discreetly pulled your camera out of your bag. You crouched down, your feet aggressively gripping the ground. You adjusted your lenses before bringing the camera up to your milky skin. You placed it in front of your left eye, your right eye closing in the process. You adjusted the fuzziness and closeness of your angles before stopping your camera at the most perfect position in your opinion. You quickly snapped at the moment, simply not caring if the boy heard you. Sure enough, he did. His head snapped around in your direction, his eyes piercing into your own. You smiled sheepishly while rubbing your arm. You shyly shrugged at the boy before taking a seat next to him. He you raised your camera up to show the boy the picture you managed to capture of him. As you showed the boy your picture, he couldn't help but become mesmerized at how beautifully and professionally you captured the scene in front of you. The picture contained an abundance of small, meaningful objects, starting with the beautiful boy sitting next to you. The picture contained the boy sitting calmly on the ground, small pricks of fresh grass surrounding his form. His lengthy legs crossed adorably, while his hands rest in between his thighs, the strap of his Polaroid hanging around his neck, while the Polaroid itself lies upon the boy's chest. The boy's soft hair, slightly blown south due to the soft breeze the world provided this morning. The top overall of the sun peeked out from the ground, giving off a warm tone to the boy's skin. The adoring purple-pink and blue hues 
being shown above the boy's already beautiful stature. The picture managed to capture everything you had ever wanted in your life. You had somehow captured the most beauteous human being ever, as well as your passion, all in one moment. You could have sworn tears pulled in your eyes as you gazed at the picture. It was the most divine piece of work you'd ever seen. You turned your head towards the boy and curiously studied him. You examined his golden flaked eyes as they seemed to grab your attention most, and everything seemed to click into place like a puzzle. You could tell by just looking into his eyes, his compassion, the moon. You didn't know why or how you could know that with a single doubt in your head, but you had a feeling, a feeling only fellow photographers and dreamers knew of. You gave the boy a certain look, communicating through your actions instead of your words. The boy seemed to know exactly what you were saying and nodded his head. You gave a warm-hearted smile, your orbs filling with happiness. You arose your camera delicately and pointed it towards the boy's eyes. Everything you had ever dreamed of was contained in two small photographs. To think that all of your dreams were compact into a pixelated piece of paper amazed you to no end. You non-verbally asked the boy's name, and he willingly gave it to you. You neatly wrote down his name on a small piece of paper in your backpack. You wanted to remember him. Tsukishi Mikei. You and Kay continued to meet every single day at the exact same spot, in the same exact time. It became a routine for the both of you. You had grown so attached to one another's company, you simply could never leave the other alone. You were so much in love with the brightness of the sun's rays. Kay was so much in love with the darkness of the moon's rays. You loved the daytime the sun brought. Kay loved the nighttime the moon brought. You never used your voice verbally. Kay always did. You expressed every ounce of your passion and emotion through your actions. Kay expressed every ounce of his thoughts and affections through his words. You had no voice. Kay had a voice. You showed every single personality trait in your photographs. Kay showed every single personality trait in his photographs. You held the importance of the pixelated memories with you everywhere. Kay held the importance of the pixelated memories with him everywhere. You fell into a deep love with Kay. Kay fell into a deep love with you. Both fell into a love for one another. You made the first move and showed your affection with a kiss. Kay made the second move and asked you to be his significant other. You more than happily obliged with a nod of your head. Kay smiled for the first time in eight years. It was then you told Kay you literally had no voice. It was then Kay's rare appearing smile turned back into a menacing frown. It was then Kay became aware of why you never used your voice. It was then Kay finally began to realize why your pictures held so much more of a story than his. The both of you never actually knew the true beauty of having a passion until you came upon each other. You realized just how important it is to have a passion, and even more so, how much more important it is to capture every moment you possibly can while you are still on Earth. Because you never know when you just might lose something more important to you than yourself. You were his sunlight, and he was your moonlight. But tragically, the sunlight from Kay's life was slowly diminished until there was almost nothing left of it. But for he still had a small portion of sunlight with him for the rest of his remaining years, because he and his sunlight had made rational decisions to capture every moment of their life together. All of your passion, all of your hard work, all of your thoughts had paid off in the end, as when the moon needed even the smallest amount of sunlight, he was always guaranteed a quantity of it. Hi everyone, I know you all deserve an explanation and I assure you I have 
a rational explanation of why I've been gone. Anyways, uh, I recorded like the beginning of the story like three weeks ago, and then like the other half didn't like, like it didn't record. So like I had like <sighs> okay, bye everyone.